everyone and welcome back to another episode of BGIW. I hope you're all ready because we got lots of championship matches here for you tonight. So strap yourselves in and enjoy some amazing wrestling action. Now first up, it's an Iron Will triple threat match where Terry Day and Eva the Hunter look to dethrone the current reigning champion, Hanshachaya. Oh man, this is going to be interesting. Keep in mind, Hanshachaya has been an absolutely unstoppable force. Like I said, he's one of the greatest submission wrestlers to ever step foot in that squared circle just absolutely knows how to pick apart his opponents you know he can twist them in so many different ways he is so good at what he does there's a reason why he has a confidence up about him a bit of a you know a bit of a swagger to him because he's just no he's just so damn good at what he does so saying that however his opponents are also incredibly good, so Hanch has definitely got his work cut out for him. Now, one thing to keep in mind with the Iron Will triple threat matches is, if memory serves correct, it should be that one person taps out. It, you know, it's elimination rules basically. If one person taps out, they'll still be. You still got to get rid of the other opponent as well. Now, Hanch Chaya though, gonna make sure that he is a fawn in their side as he looks to keep a hold on that belt. Now, Terry Durr, one of his opponents, actually a former Iron World Champion as well. And Ethan the Hunter, someone who was very nearly Limitless Champion. Uh, basically, both are gonna be very effective in their own right in terms of submission holds. You know, Terry Durr coming down to the ring has already proven that they're a capable submission wrestler by winning the damn belt in the first place. But looking to become a two-time championship holder, it's going to be interesting to see how this play this plays out because, well, you know that it's not going to be easy. You know that Hanch being a two-time champion is not going to make it easy for Terry Durr, but Terry Durr has an intensity about him an unwillingness to give up that I think it's going to be very hard to tap Terry Durr out. And then we look at the third man of the match, a man who's going to be very different in style to the way that Hanch and Terry are going to go about submissions. You know, all three of them are different in the ring, but typically, you know, Hanch and Terry, they're just going to wear down the opponent's limbs and go for that submission. Ethan doesn't go by that, those rules. Even batters the opponent, locks in that guillotine choke, and by that point you're so battered, you're so bruised, you're so worn out, you're tapping out or you're passing out, either way, you're done. Like the guillotine choke is an almost certain victory for Ethan the Hunter when that is locked in. That makes Ethan incredibly dangerous to deal with, and it makes it unlike the other wrestlers. He's not He's less of a person who is a straight up traditional submission expert. He's just someone who is very good at taking his opponents out. And it just so happens that his key finisher is a submission. Now, you see, here we go. The three wrestlers going at it here. And the match begins. Andrew raising right out of the gate. Rounds with that headbutt into Ethan the Hunter. And they're going for Terry Durr. And you can see Hanch, the champion, wanting to go right out of the gate, trying to take on both challengers. Because, again, it's incredibly important that he, you know, can remain on top. But Terry Durr takes Hanch out, at least for now. And a big, a big clothesline there from Ethan the Hunter. Now, I feel like Ethan is going to... Eat. Oh, Sling Blade! It's going to be incredibly interesting to see how this goes. You've got... One of the greatest athletes in Terry Durr. You're one of the greatest strikers in Ethan. And you've got one of the greatest you know, technical wrestlers in Anjajaya. Like, there's three different styles here going at it. And it's going to be interesting to see who comes out on top. Oh, and there we go. Takedown right there from Ethan the Hunter. As he takes Terry Durr to the ground. And they're going to Hanch. Oh, Hanch with another running headbutt. And now him and Ethan going at it back and forth here. 
Oh, Hanch is going to have to be careful. Oh, nice block there. And a clothesline from Hanch. Hanch runs over. Oh, but he misses the clothesline. But a nice punch there. Oh, but it's not enough to turn the tides back in his favor. Terry Durr now. What is he planning to do here to Hanch? Going up to the top. Oh, good lord. Looks like they're going to go for a superplex. Oh, my goodness. Oh, wow. Superplex right there. Hanch is getting out of there. Very smart on Hanch's part. Means that he can try and regain some of that energy. Meanwhile, Ethan is battering Terry Durr here. Terry Durr, though. Nice takedown right there with the shoulder block. And now... Terry Durr. Now, his finishing move is the armbar. Um... It can, it, it has done very well in tapping people out. Oh man, nice work there by Terry Durr. He is very gifted. Like Terry Durr has the ability to go far, I feel, in VGIW. Again though, VGIW, it's a bit, you know, you hear the phrase about like big fish in a small pond or stuff like that. Well, this is a big pond that's just filled with big fish. Like, oh man. It is so incredibly cutthroat. There are so many amazing wrestlers that should be like multi-time world champions. And in any other company, would be multi-time world champions. Fact is though, in VGIW, there's, the v you know, there's only so many prizes, so many opportunities. Not everyone is going to be a world champion. It's crazy, but that shows how high the level of talent is here on in VGRW. Oh, even that nice clothesline. Beautiful work right there. Now, speaking of the World Championship, I want to let you all know that we are on the slow build to VGIW's World League. World League featuring the World Championship Tournament. And anyone can enter. Well, anyone can attempt to qualify at least. There are qualifying matches. And we have seen some very interesting people take part. Now, assuming Hank can hold on to the title, he will be in the World you know, the World League Tournament. Um, we've seen the likes of BBC. We've seen the likes of Biohazard. We're seeing a lot of incredible wrestlers getting involved in the World League Tournament. I heartily recommend that people check it out. Meanwhile, lovely SCF here on Hanch Achaya. We could be about to see a tap out here. Nope, Hanch is gonna get right out of that. I wasn't gonna get myself too excited. Hanch is a great submission expert and he knows how to escape submission holes just as well as he knows how to get, it, you know, put them on and lock them on. But yeah, there's the World League Tournament is shaping up to be just as historic as the other two World League Tournaments. Now, the previous two winners, Hardcore Hank, you know, multi-time world champion. I believe he's now a two to three time world champion. He is incredibly gifted. He is a decorated wrestler. He, I may not always get on with him, but the fact is I don't deny wrestlers talents. And he is damn talented. Second World League Tournament. Wade Danielson, a person who I've repeatedly credited as one of the greatest high flyers in VGIW. You know, won his first World Championship in VGIW, you know, since its CD debut. It was a great showing. Honestly, really nice. Oh, man. Only reason he lost it was due to Platinum Pete cashing in that briefcase. Also, I just realized that Sledgehammer got involved. There's no DQ, I guess, in a match like, in a triple threat match. But I, was that Hanch that brought that in? I got so caught up on the World League stuff. I must apologize, ladies and gentlemen. I would normally be way more on the ball about that. Oh my goodness. This is getting serious. I think if Hanch did that, he's getting intimidated by, you know, the ability of Ethan and Terry. Well, someone was getting intimidated, someone was getting frustrated by the level of competition they're having to deal with. Like I said, all three wrestlers are good, but there are so many amazing wrestlers here in VGRW. Oh, the label lock! Here we go, look at this! 
Oh, this could be it for Ethan. I think Ethan might be about to tap out. Yep, there we go. Just like that, Ethan is out. And now it's between Hanch and Terry Durr. See what I say? I will championship matches if there's multiple people it's elimination rules the art the, the idea is that this is a title that's meant to test your endurance test your metal you know it's not like the other belts where you know you can be where you can be cunning and swoop in and almost steal the victory with this one your you know your hardiness your resiliency is proof you know is really tested terry Turner with a big boot Oh man, I think Terry Dell was mocking Hatch a bit there. Going for the leg here. And you can see just working Hatch over. Now that's the one good leg of Hatch. Now you might notice on his left knee there was a knee brace. And I think that's deliberate. I think that's a deliberate choice by Terry Dirt. He knows that the left knee is a weaker knee. But if he can take the right knee as well out, that could make things a lot harder for Hatch. You know, you got a bad knee and a bad knee in that case, you know. You're going to be Steve Austin walking around. Oh, man. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. The armbar. The armbar. Oh, my God. It's got to be over. It's got to be over. Hadge trying to hang in there. Trying. Seeing his championship slipping away. Oh, but I think I think Terry Bell was slipping. And he knew to let go. And Hadge is immediately back up. And now Hanch, going for that armbar. Oh, look at that, going for a Moodle Lock, actually. And now, stretching, Terry Durnow, struggling, scrambling, trying to get free, and looks like he manages to do so. Look at that. Man, this is close. This is incredibly close. You can see both wrestlers really are testing each other here. Pushing each other to the limit. Oh my god, be careful! Oh my god! That nearly got grisly right there. That nearly got very grisly. Keep in mind that sledgehammer. The referee, keeping an eye on the wrestlers, hasn't gotten rid of the sledgehammer. A little shocked that they haven't done that, but there we are. Oh, I'm bringing Tre Terry down. Oh, man down! But Terry right back up into this. He is not going out that easily. Oh! I was speaking about nearly winning the Limitless title. Terry Durr nearly won the Limitless title, but unfortunately, because it was First Blood Rules, Terry Durr, despite the fact that he was doing surprisingly well, if memory says correct, against the Crusher, because he didn't bust the Crusher open, it didn't matter. Oh, man, look at this. Oh, look at this. Nice back draw. Boom. Oh, my goodness. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Oh, that was close. That sledgehammer is giving me anxiety. But, thankfully, it's not playing a part now. And Hanchachaya could be closing in on that championship victory. Nice uppercut right there. And I think Terry Durr, another uppercut. Who is going to win? Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Oh, God, be careful. Oh, it's a butterfly lock. Okay. And now... Look at this! Stretching Terry Durr, and I think this might be it! There we go! Hanj Achaya, still your Iron Will champion. I'm definitely going to have to play back the tape later to find out what happened there with that sledgehammer. I legitimately got so focused on telling you about the illustrious World League Tournament that I didn't notice. It appears we're not going to get to see it on the replay. What foul play happened there? Did our champion get involved? Or did one of the challengers try to get an unfair advantage? I feel like this isn't over. Either way, I don't think this is over. Hanchachaya. Someone who can beat some of the best. Still your Iron Wheel champion. But... I think that we've got... I think this story is far from over. That sledgehammer in the ring could have been an instrumental device in the result of this match. I apologise for being so ill-informed. We'll have to update you next episode.
Anyway, next up, it's a Limitless Championship match as Katsuyori Machida looks to defend the title against former world champion Wade Danielson. Oh, now this has the makings of a truly great match. Genuinely has the makings of what could be one of the greatest matches in VGIW's history. In my opinion, two of my favorite wrestlers, two wrestlers that have been absolutely on another level here in VGIW this, you know, in 2K19. They have come into their own. Well, Katsuyori debuting in VGIW in 2K19 has had some of the greatest matches I have ever seen. And then you have Wade Danielson, who has really begun to flourish, winning the world title, having also some of the most entertaining matches I have ever seen. And now we get to see them collide. Now, that's not a guarantee that we're gonna see them have some of the greatest matches ever, but it's a pretty good chance, isn't it? One of the greatest high flyers, one of the greatest all-rounders, like, it, this is going to be great. This is genuinely going to be great. Either way, even if it isn't one of the greatest matches ever, it's going to be entertaining. Like, I am stoked for this, and it's for one of the top prizes in VGIW. This was the top title when VGIW Genesis was a thing. Went back when there was a brand split. VGIW's Mount Top, VGIW's Genesis, VGIW's Mount Top had the world title, VGIW Genesis had the Limitless Championship. Now, I know I haven't explained it, but the Limitless Championship, the rules of the Limitless Championship are simple. Basically, the holder of the title gets to decide the stipulation that they will continue to defend their title until they lose it. The Crusher chose to defend it, his title in first blood matches, meaning that until he lost his title, people would have to somehow beat him in a first blood match, which was only done by Katsuyori Machida. Ace, meanwhile, did a huge tournament, the well, a huge competition, the Limitless Championship Hunt, which was technically allowed, and that's how Ace's title reign ended. Because, you know, there were so many people going for it that unfortunately Ace just, you know, eventually got bumped off, really. Um, and Katsuyori Machida, I believe doing no holds barred matches, I could be mistaken, but the point is Katsuyori, all I, what I do remember is Katsuyori Machida, his match type, he wants to push wrestlers to their limits, he wants to see the greats, he wants to see, you know, what happens when they, when they do their absolute best in that ring, and I have a feeling that our match against Wade Danielson has the makings of something truly, truly special. There you see, there's Wade Danielson. Wade Danielson, a person who is very familiar with big name title matches like this. Wade Danielson was in the world title picture since the beginning. He was also in the first ever World League tournament, managing to beat Herman. I believe he lost in the second round. Yeah, but like, I don't think like the world league tournament has like three rounds so basically he got pretty good he did pretty good in that and he ended up winning the second one now if he wins this i can imagine he's not going to be in the third world league tournament meaning that if hank takes part in the third world league tournament i believe he'll be the only person who has taken part in all three from world league tournaments which is a pretty crazy fact but that is that that's I think gonna be the truth. I have to look into that a bit more. Oh man. But for Wade Danielson, it's about the opportunity. And he has a huge opportunity here. He could become our next limitless champion. And right now though, Katsuyori Machida coming right in. And now Wade looking to return the offense. Look at him. Manages to catch that soul butt perfectly. And now an uppercut. You can see these two are pacing themselves. They're not going crazy just yet. Oh, never mind. Here we go from 0 to 100. Wade Danielson's waiting for the moment. And here we go. Oh, right to the outside. And there we go. We're getting that taste of what these two are capable of. What these two are capable of. They are incredible athletes in that ring. 
And now, Fireman's carry. You can tell the referee isn't counting. These two could battle for hours on the outside. All that matters is eventually they get back in that ring for a pinfall or submission victory. Now you see Katsuyori Machida. Looks like he's going to try deadlifting Wade. Look at this. German suplex onto that outside. The neck and the back is going to be in agony after that. Wade Danielson now looking to come back in with some stiff kicks. Oh, but absolutely overwhelmed by Katsuyori Machida right there. And now Katsuyori with that soul butt once again. Big chest chop. Oh, Wade dodges, but now going in. And a big clothesline. And now Katsuyori being brought back up to his feet here. Brought back into the ring. Wade Danielson now. Oh, look at this. Gonna go for a springboard maneuver here. And now, look at this. Oh, Hurricane Rana. And Katsuyori is struggling. Definitely gonna wanna. Oh, they're going back on the outside here. But look at this. Stiff kicks to the chest right here in this one. I remember one of my favorite matches. I've said it time and time again. Katsuyori Machida versus Sammy the Savior. And another one, Katsuyori Machida versus the Crusher. Yo, know, the thing is with Katsuyori, he's had some of the greatest. Yeah, you know, he's had some incredible, legendary matches. In just the short time he's been with us, he has set himself up as someone who absolutely deserves to have his name up against you know, the other limitless champions like Ace, the Crusher, you know. And now, that proving that he can stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with the likes of Wade Danielson. Wade Danielson on his part has had some incredible matches as well. You know, absolutely just having incredible moments. Wade has had notable matches throughout his career ever since he's been here. Ever since VGIW had its TV debut, he has had some very notable matches. Some of the longest matches in VGIW's history, such as the Crusher versus Chosen One versus Wade, which clocked in at about 40 minutes, which at the time was the longest match on record. He's also been in one of the shortest matches on record at the time, well, at the, at the time shortest match, when he lost to Brutus Armstrong. Fact is, Wade Danielson, you know, oh, beautiful. Chris Spellbow drop. Macho Man would be very happy with that one. But yeah, Wade Danielson has been in many record-setting matches of that time. And now, what is Katsuyori looking to do? Oh my god! Katsuyori calling for Wade! And now, gonna fly! Oh my god! Oh! And that could cost Katsuyori dearly! He's back up. Nothing too serious, thankfully, but wow, that was not pretty at all. That is absolutely not what, you know, Katsuyori was hoping for. That has got to majorly, majorly suck. Man, but Katsuyori managing to bounce back from the looks of it. I'm honestly glad about that. That was, that looked nasty. That just straight up looked nasty. And now bringing him back into the ring. What is Wade going to do? Oh, going for a DDT. Nice work right there. And now racing up to the top rope. Oh my God, there's no way. Wade going for the 450 splash. Oh my God, is it over? Is it over? One, two, three. We've got a new Limitless Champion! Wade Danielson is your new Limitless Champion! Just like that! Just like that! And I think that drop kick to the outside is what really turned the tide for Katsuyori here. Man oh man! Wade Danielson! I believe the first person in VGRW's history to have held both the World Championship and the Limitless Championship. Wade Danielson is on his way to being a... You know, he is doing well for himself. Man, I'm getting I'm getting myself all in a, you know, all, like, like speculative. But could you imagine if someone held the VGRW World title, the Limitless title, the GHK World title, and the OW World title? I don't know if 
I'll, I, my, that might never happen, but imagine if it did. But my word, we have seen history here tonight. But sadly for Katsuyori, his reign as Limitless Champion is over. But once again, the top titles go in the hands of another top competitor, Wade Danielson, setting another record here in VGIW. Absolutely huge result right there. Major, major victory. I can imagine that Wade Danielson, as ever, is ecstatic. Congratulations to Wade Danielson. Anyway, we move on to the next match of the evening now. It's the Intense Wrestling Tag Team title match as Gork and Oglin take on Showtime. Apologies, ladies and gentlemen, for that delay. You know, sometimes things do go wrong, um, but I want to thank you all for your patience. Now, let's get into the action. Man, these are two incredible tag teams right here. On one hand, you've got the reigning champions, Showtime, who have held onto that title for probably the longer than anyone else, or at least very close to Hank and Keller, the Gills reign. But then you have Gork and Oglin, one of the newer teams, Wild Horde, one of the newer teams to VGIW, and they look to try and they're looking to try and set their, you know, etch their name, make themselves a mainstay in the VGIW tag team division. Honestly, you've got the brain and the brawn here. The brain and Oglin, you know, the smarter, the faster. You've got Gork though, who is one of the largest athletes that we have in VGIW. He is incredibly intimidating. And I think could genuinely pose a problem. These two together could pose a major problem for Showtime. Oh man, you can see that standing tall right now. Oh, this is gonna be interesting to see how, it, how they fare against the current reigning champions. You can see they're calm though, they're composed. When that bell rings though, Gork is absolutely gonna let his ferocious sight out, but maybe trying to remain cautious, maybe not cautious, but trying to not let themselves get too excited, too hard in such, you know, because you don't want to make a mistake in a big match like this. Especially when the opponents seem to have an iron grip on that, the titles, like Showtime do. Here we go. Oh man, the Tag Team Champions are here. Kendrick Melandra on the left, Eli T on the, on the right, aka in front. These two are absolutely, they are decorated. Multi-time Tag Champs, if, I, if memory serves correct. They have a reign right now that's rivaling that of Hank and Keller. They've been around since the beginning, pretty much, in the tag division. They are the... They, they are a threat. On one hand, once again, Brain and Brawn here. You've got Kendrick Malandra, who is a devious, devious individual, who absolutely will cheat to win. That's one reason why they've had such an ironclad grip on those belts. He is a perfectly fine wrestler, but... 
what helps him get that advantage is he is not he is perfectly fine with cheating to win then you've got Eli T a major major powerhouse and you know like one of the you know one of the got one of the greatest clotheslines which we like to call the Eli T speed force clothesline um, he is genuinely you know it, it makes for a deadly combination and there's a reason why the, the newer tag teams, as they get acclimatized to VGIW, so far haven't gotten to the point where they can topple Showtime yet. I imagine as each of these teams continues to grow and improve, it's going to be a matter of when, not if. But right now, right now, these teams have not managed to topple Showtime yet and get those titles off of them. And Hank and Keller, you yeah, know, their sights are elsewhere. Hank, right now, world champion. Keller, well... Supporting Hank, I suppose. Yeah, he can't win the world. He can't win the tag titles on his own. So, yeah. Anyway, there's Gork and Oglin. Again, remaining calm. No one I'd expect from Gork, but I imagine under instructions from Oglin to remain calm in this situation. Meanwhile, you've got Kendrick Melandra, Eli T. Now, I mentioned the World League Tournament. Kendra Melandra was in the World League Tournament. Lost to Hardcore Hank, the very first World League Tournament. But it was one hell of a brawl. You know, it was very interesting to watch. Now, there we go. There's the tag titles. Oh, here we go. This could be big. We could be about to see new tag team champions. Let's go! The match begins! And right away, there we go, takedown by Gork. We see the two big powerhouses going at it. And you saw there with the ease that Gork was able to lift Eli T right there, that this is going to be very difficult for Eli. We've seen Eli in the past have struggled when facing other powerhouses. You know, I mentioned how, how people like to say Play Princess is a powerhouse that can counter other powerhouses. Well, in this case, it's quite the opposite for Eli T. He's a powerhouse that can struggle against other powerhouses. Now, Irish Whip into the corner here. And now, look at this. Nice, right into the midsection. And right now, Gorkin Oglin in full control of this matchup. Eli T definitely seeming to be struggling right now. Oh, look at this. Elbow to the top of the head, right to the crown. And now, bringing Eli back to his feet, but Eli with an uppercut staggers Oglin. And now the Irish whip. Could we be about to see about a bit of double teaming maneuvers here? Nice tag to Kendrick Melandra. Holding Oglin in place. Nice boot right there. Oglin dodges, and now, grabbing Kendrick Melandra, drags him over, but Kendrick not about to let another double team maneuver happen, not to him and now we're seeing Kendrick Melandra oh look at this going for a nice rib breaker right there good work there by Kendrick Melandra who's remaining in control of this matchup and now stop on the back of the head Oh man, wrenching it now, and right now, Kendrick Melandra in control against Oglin. Completely 180 to what we saw a moment ago, where, you know, Gork and Oglin were in control. Right now, Kendrick Melandra absolutely in control of Oglin right now. This isn't looking good right now. Oglin needs to turn this around. If he wants to, you know, if he wants to help, you know, maybe he needs to tag Gorkin. You know, oh man, this isn't looking good for him right, for the team right now. And Kendra Melandra is practically humiliating Oglin. Oh, there we go. Oglin now going to go tagging in Gork. Here we go. Bit of a double team maneuver now. As we go for shoulder back toss. Lovely work right there. And now bringing. Kendrick Melandra to his feet. Oh, but Kendrick, nice neck breaker right there. And now, look at this dragging Gork over. Oh, lovely work right there. And now, close line from Gork. Oh. 
You could see there Kendrick was trying to get to Eli T, but it wasn't going to happen. And now Kendrick going to tag in Eli. No! Walk manages to escape, so no double team maneuver at least. And now, with a snap mare, looks to regain control of this match. Auckland's now in. And now Auckland gonna deal with Kendrick Melandra. Goes for the leg. Whoa, right across the knee. And now brings Kendrick back to his feet. And an Irish whip into the corner. We might be able to see some double team maneuvers. Oh, fast strike right there. Nice display here right now. Gork and Oglin in firm control of the match right now. Now, goes over. Tags Gork back in. Oh, what is he planning to do here? Boom! Right across the face. And now, Kendrick looking to bounce back with a knee to the jaw. Irish whip into the corner. Could we be about to see Eli T back in the match? No, Gork's not going to let that happen. Irish whip into the corner. And no, oh, Kendrick Malandra there with an elbow. We try to go for Cutter, but no luck there. And Gork now going to get bring him back into that corner. Oh, face first into the turnbuckle. And now, another double team maneuver from Gork and Oglin. Look at this. Axe handle right across the arm. And now look at that big power slam right there. Oh man, Kendrick bouncing back, but you've got to imagine he is in pain after that one. An Irish whip from Kendrick, who I imagine wants to get out of there. There you go, tagging in the IT. Like I said, Kendrick definitely in pain. He's going to want to take some time to recover. And now, Eli T back in the fold. Nice Irish whip right there. And now tagging in Gork. And now Gork with an axe handle. Oh, giant tree. You know, those tree branch arms crashing down. And now Eli being sent to the outside. And Gork roaring at the crowd. And now the referee begins the count. They've got to be careful here. Remember. A can out win or loss. The titles do not change hands. Yeah, you can only win the titles by pinfall or submission. Oh, look at that. Rolling. Alright, now nice strikes there from Eli T. Beautiful drop kick. This is going well right now. Referee continue the count though. Count of five. And I want to get back in that ring now. Look at this now, Eli. Gonna grab Gork, get him back into the ring, I imagine. No! No, a knee to the face right there. Cutting it close right now. Nice take down there by Gork. And a count of eight. Gork. Oh my god. Oh, right into the corn. The post. Count of nine. Gork's back in the ring. But Deli. And the match is over. Wild Horde wins. But there's a problem. That means that still your champions are showtime. What does this mean for the tag titles? Oh my god, well after that, we're moving on now to the United Team Championship match as Yvang Zhang and Rebecca Storm Storm System Worldwide face Billy and Christina. My goodness, now that was a shocker of a result. What is that going to mean for the tag title scene? You know, that, like that really has thrown a spatter in the works, surely. Eli T lost the match for Showtime, but by count out, they're still the champions. Gork and Oglin can't be happy about that. Now, making their way down to the ring is Storm System Worldwide on the left is Rebecca Storm on the right, her husband, former world champion Aaron Storm, and in the middle is Zivang Zhang, the newest member of Storm System Worldwide. Zivang Zhang, very capable in that ring, and honestly, the three of them are very capable athletes. Very scary, and uh, not very natural athletes. <clears throat> um, but the fact is, they're very capable. Aaron and Rebecca, may, you know, are in, what, what makes up is their strength and their cunning. You know, they can be out-wrestled any day of the week, but they're so strong, they're so devious, 
then it helps give them an advantage when they're in that ring. And then you got Zvang Zheng, who's actually pretty handy in the ring. That I think that, that makes them makes Rebecca and Zvang quite a tough combo to deal with. Anyway, now we wait. Here we go. Here comes Billy and Christina. And I am interested to see how this is going to go. Billy and Christina, two sisters who have done very well in my opinion. They may not be the toughest, the strongest, but they are probably one of the most cohesive units in, well, either tag division in my opinion. Maybe Blood and Gore rivals them in terms of like cohesive units, but the fact is they are on the same page. They're on the same sentence. They are, so, you know, they work brilliantly together, and that's what helped them get the tiles from, I believe it was Pain and Malice. Honestly, I've got to say, I am very interested to see how this is going to go. You can see that, you know, they are ready for this. Honestly, I am excited. There's the updated United Team Championships. They look nice, in my opinion. I'm quite happy with them. But, Billy and Christina. Like I mentioned, they're not the strongest, so it's going to be interesting to see if they can deal with the massive strength disparity between them and their opponents. Because you know that Rebecca and Zivang are going to take full advantage there. Anyway, now, here we go. This is on the line. We're, this is a massive episode of VGIW, just championships all on the line. Great stuff. Always fun to watch. This kind of stuff. Now we wait. There's Rebecca and Zivang Zhang. They, oh, they are ready. And I am excited. Look at this. Now, there's Billy and Christina with the United Team titles. I, I am... Cool. I, I don't know who to go for on this. This is kind of the thing why I get excited when I watch VGIW. Because there's so many great athletes, but yet you can never say for certain who's going to come out on top. Now, there's there we go, handing the titles over. The referee raising them up, showing all the people what is on line here. What is at stake? And for these women... This is a huge prize. Winning a championship in VGIW is a momentous occasion. Even the lowest card tiles on the you know on the rung, you know, it's still a big deal because it raises your stock. It makes you clear that you are a bigger deal. And it helps you continue to climb that ladder to the very top prizes. The prizes that only a few can really ever get to hold. There will be people, but there have been people who have joined VGIW, left VGIW, and never held a title. There are people who have been around since episode one of VGIW and have never held a title in VGIW. Like, that is incredible. But it shows that no matter what, no matter how many titles there are, the fact is, you know, not everyone is ever, not everyone is going to win the titles. Especially when you've got such amazing comp competitors. And right now, Billy holding strong, trying to deal with Zivang Zhang. Taking her into that corner now. And Billy going to tag in Christina. Here we go. The first double team maneuver of the match. Look at this. Snap mare. And boom with a meteora. Nice work there by Christina. And now bringing Zivang back up to her feet. Our Irish whip back into the corner. Oh, rear-ending her right there. And Zivang Zhang right now is seeming to struggle with Billy and Christina. Not what I would have expected. But Zivang there quickly kicking out. And that's something to keep in mind. Is that sometimes people can hit a thousand moves. I've mentioned it before. But it's like a feather duster versus a sledgehammer. Sometimes someone hit a million moves in a match. They seem in control for the majority of the match. But it's like getting hit with a feather duster. Then you have a wrestler. Like say Hardcore Hank for instance. Who will hit you like five times in a match. And trust me. Those five hits will leave a mark like a sledgehammer to the face that's the difference sometimes now i'm not saying that billy and christina are necessary feather, necessarily feather dusters but maybe in comparison to zivang and rebecca storm 
They may be hitting a lot lighter. Oh, there you see right there, doesn't topple Rebecca Storm. And of course, it's not always about the power of the hits. I mean, there's a reason why there's such a thing as like Death of a Thousand Cuts, for instance. You know, sometimes you can, you know, with enough fortitude, wear someone down. That's perfectly viable a strategy. It's just, you know, when you're dealing with powerhouses like Rebecca and Zafeng, you know, you can't let yourself, you know, you can't let them get dominant because otherwise it could all fall apart in an instant. It's always a tactical game. Like, wrestling, it's a thing where you just think it's just a case of smacking people, but there's a lot of intricacies that go on. Tagging in Billy now, and you can see there, like I was saying, there's intricacies, there's tactics, and you can see Billy and Christina. Even though Christina wasn't doing that badly, still tags out to Billy, likely trying to make it so that they can keep fresh, keep fresh in this, and have a better chance. And as you can see, it seems to be paying off with Billy completely fresh as a daisy with that Spanish fly on the outside likely left a mark there on Rebecca and now going to go ooh for some strikes to the face and that is a good sign right there you know that's what I was saying you gotta you know it's not as simple as just smacking an opponent you gotta have some tactics especially if someone is more powerful than you Oh, here we go. Billy now. Continuing to fight back. Doing very well. Looks like it might be another time for another tag, perhaps. No, no, no. Never go mind. Going for the ropes here. Oh, wait a minute. Ooh! Rebecca lands on her feet. But I don't think she's expecting this! Billy flies over the top to the outside. And the crowd are loving this. Billy and Christina doing great in this match. Oh, but Rebecca Storm! Shing the cobwebs out. Manages to push Billy away, but Billy right back up. Oh no. Slap suplex right there on the outside. And these two right now, Billy having to try and shrug off the pain to keep fighting back. But this is not looking good. Right into our LED board. And this is the problem that I was mentioning when it comes to the, like I said, Feather Duster versus a Sledgehammer. Billy had been doing a lot of moves. But Rebecca saw in the few moves she's doing, clearly leaving a mark. Now we're getting close to another count out. Count of seven, thankfully, back into the ring. We're not having a repeat of the last match. And now tagging in Christina. And you can tell Billy realized the damage that had been done. She needed to get out of there. So now it's up to Christina to continue the momentum here. This is what I was saying. Billy and Christina are very much in sync. They're making it so it's very difficult for Rebecca and Zivang here. Nice DDT right there. And Zivang calling for Rebecca. But Rebecca, my goodness, rushes over. There's a reason she's the wife of Aaron Storm. My God, if we had mixed tag wrestling matches, you know for a fact they would be, team they would be teaming up every bloody week. Oh, here we go now, tagging in Zivang Zhang. Aaron Storm slightly more muscular, but I think Rebecca Storm slightly more cunning. And now we're seeing a bit from Zivang Zhang. But wait a minute. Oh, Christina! Look at that! That arm drag managing to get out of that. That's very good work there. And now, look at that! Oh, brilliant work. Brilliant work there with Athleta Del Sol by Christina. Now go for an arm bar here. Looking to try and take Zivang out quickly in this. And Zivang hanging on in there and managing to get ooh, three right there. Man. Oh, but look at this now. Picking Christina up and just tossing her about. Like, that was not, you know, like, just so carelessly. But that's how Storm Sister Worldwide works. And now look at this. Look at this. Oh, oh just the ease at which she can pick up a fellow human being. Storm Sister Worldwide is a terrifying fraction. Oh, they're trying to go for a big boot, but Christina manages to dodge it. And now going in. Lovely, lovely DDT right there. Great work right there by Christina. Looking to try and keep up the pace with Zivang, but Zivang brushing it off. And now, oh, no, double team maneuver there. 
And now an Irish whip from Christina. She looks to bounce back on her own. And rear ending Zivang Zhang. Oh, Rebecca still wanted to get involved, but the referee is telling Rebecca to get back in. Oh, the drop kick. Oh, it's the beginning of the end. It's the beginning of the end. And now Christina looking to see if she can end it already. I don't think it's going to happen. Two. There we go. Kick out. Oh, my God. The strength of Rebecca Storm right there. That was incredible. And boom. Oh, big strike there from Zivane Shane. And a big kick right there. And Christina might be out. Oh, man. No, Christina still a little bit of fight in her. Wait a minute. Billy and Rebecca still fighting on the outside. Oh, my God. Submission. This is Christina's finisher. Can she get Zivang Zhang to tap out? It's going to be very difficult. I imagine Zivang is going to do whatever she can to endure. And oh, it began a slip. You can see there, Christina weakened, wasn't able to keep hold of it. And she realized she needs to tag out. So in comes Billy. That's smart. Again, they're trying to keep fresh here. They're trying to keep the momentum going as long as possible. Billy's going for a pinfall here. One. Two. Oh my goodness! And Re and Christina goes takes out Rebecca, but accidentally takes the referee out in the process. Oh wait a minute! Oh my God! There's a steel chair. Aaron saw the opportunity right away. Didn't even waste any time. The moment the referee was at, was bumped, he went for that steel chair. Now doesn't seem Sivang has noticed it, so she hasn't taken advantage of the steel chair. And it doesn't look like she might even need it. Because she's looking for the finisher here. And now, look at this. The kill switch. Oh, my goodness. And that's going to do it. One, two, three. Onto the steel chair. And there we go. We have new United Team Champions. Oh, man. That was a close fight, honestly. I, like... You know, I was honestly a very close fight. You know, Rebecca and Zivang, you know, they that, their strikes were hard, their sounds were powerful. Re but Billy and Christina, as ever, an incredibly united front. They did what they could to endure for as long as possible, but unfortunately, in the end of it, they just could not keep going. They were not ready to deal with that kind of power. And so, you're gonna have to wonder, if they have a rematch for the titles, will they be able to come back better and stronger in the rematch? Or are Zivang and Rebecca going to keep an ironclad grip on those titles? We're going to have to wait and see, I guess. But, you know, congratulations as ever to our new United Team Champions. Storm Sister Worldwide, definitely, you know, happy with that one. That is... Yeah, as much as I don't like Storm System Worldwide, it is hard to deny their success. They have been extremely dominant in their time in VGIW. So big kudos to them. Another championship victory under their belts. And we move on now. It's a hardcore championship match as the animal Tom Gris looks to take on Trash Taker. Now, the Hardcore Championship is an, always an interesting title to talk about. Keep in mind that with this title, this is a cross-promotional title. VGIW and GHK. If you have that title, you, at least while you hold the title, are allowed to move from VGIW to GHK and back again. Of course, when you lose the title, you go back to the promotion you're under contract for. But... In that moment, you get to promote yourself, you get to be a big deal, you get to fight all kinds of opponents, and that is a big deal, that really raises your name value. You suddenly are a person who's not only proving yourself to be championship material in VGIW, you're championship material in GHK, you're able to fight and take on all kinds of contenders. You know, that makes you quite a unique presence. You know, we see it with the likes of Ken Dyer, for instance, who managed to do, you know, translate in VGIW and in GHK, you know, and that, and, and, and he's done quite well for himself, in my opinion. Uh, didn't approve of the way he left us, but, you know, to go to GHK, but whatever. Point is, that hardcore title can mean a lot to some people if they know how to utilize it. 
You know, we've seen people like Ace Tank Barkey, who I think has been a two-time Hardcore Champion. It's a pretty big deal, like I said. Anyway, out comes the current reigning Hardcore Champion. It's Trash Taker. Now, Trash Taker holding on to that championship. He has been at... He is a GHK superstar, but because he's holding on to that title right now, that's why he gets to appear here on BGIW. Again, major promotion for Trash Taker. He gets to be seen by all new eyes. If you don't watch GHK, you still get, you know, he's, you still get to witness what he can do. And vice versa, if you watch GHK but you don't watch this, you might get to see a whole new superstar if Tom Griss wins it. Man, oh man. Trash Taker though, coming down. That is a title that can really, you know, leave a mark. Like, like that. There's a reason why Trash Taker looks as badly beaten up as he is. Because, you know, to win that kind of title, you have to be willing to put your body through a lot of pain. I mean, this is the only title where I can think of where it's only defended in no disqualification matches. You know, you're throwing weapons at each other. You can go, you can wrestle on the outside for as long as you want. You have to get back in the ring eventually. It's not false count anywhere after all. But the fact is, you can do whatever you want within legal, legal reasons, of course. And, yeah, it just makes it a whole different feel to a lot of the other titles. Trash Tag has been doing very well holding onto the belt so far, but will the rain end tonight? We're gonna have to wait and see. Well, I say that, we're not gonna have to wait long, but you know what I mean. Anyway, oh man. I don't know who to vote, go for on this one. On one hand, Trash Taker is very much built for the Hardcore Division. But if you've ever watched Orcs Wrestling Live, you know that Tom Gris can absolutely pull some crazy upsets on opponents. So this really could be anyone's game. Tom Gris keeping a level head into this one. You know... But you got to think he is. He knows he could be in for a world of hurt in this one. And you see Trash Taker. Now, I can't read Trash Taker with that mask on. But, you know, this is not and this is not unfamiliar territory to him. Like I said, he has very much made a career of, of hardcore matches, death matches, whatever you want to call them. He has done them. There's a reason his body is as battered as it is. The fact is, is that he is used to this kind of situation. He's familiar with all kinds of stuff. Kendo sticks, barbed wire, steel chairs. You know, whatever you can throw at him, he's probably been hit with it at least a few times. There we go now. The match begins. And Trash Taker racing right out of the gate with a clothesline. And now looking to deal with Tom Gris. Brings him right back up to his feet. But Tom Gris blocks and returns with a punch. Oh, try to go for a clothesline, but nice work there by Trash Taker, taking him down. And now Trash Taker going for a knee to the face. And now, oh, he is, get, I think he's getting a bit cocky here. But right now in full control, so can you blame him? Oh, right into the ropes right there. And now bringing Tom Gris right back up to his feet here. Oh, winding that punch up right there for extra damage and just working Tom Gris over, breaking him, picking him apart. Going for an early pin here, but only a one count. Tom Gris is not going to stay down that easily. Now, I believe this will be Tom Gris's first championship on the channel if he were to win. Um, so, again, could be an interesting time for him. Big elbow drop right there. Nicely delivered. And now, bringing Tom Gris to his feet. A uh, Tom Gris there with a nice uppercut right there. And now, boom! Staggering Trash Taker. Oh, but look at this. Irish whip against those ropes. Oh, trying to go for a bicycle kick, but Tom Gris dodges. And again dodges. And you can... Oh, nice work there. Grabbing a hold of Tom Gris, making sure he couldn't dodge that one. But you got to imagine Trash Taker not used to dealing with someone like Tom Gris, perhaps. 
Tom Gris clearly a little bit more agile than he might be used to in the likes of GHK. I mean, GHK is definitely starting to have more athletic wrestlers. But Trastec are definitely far more used to the deathmatch type where it's more about just throwing light tubes at people. And Tom Gris, different kind of wrestler than that. Might be a little bit some little bit on more unfamiliar territory for Trash Taker. There we see. Oh! Can't seem to knock Trash Taker over, however. Third time still can't do it. Oh! That chop to the face. Just basically Whoa! That might be one of the best arm drags I have ever seen. The height achieved right there. Tom Gris now could be in trouble. I mean Trash Taker has been, you know. This, this match has been fairly even, but I'd say it's leaning towards Trash Taker. Now going for a pinfall here. One, two. Oh, kick out right at two. Right on two. No 2.5. That was right on the money on two. And now bringing Tom Griff back to his feet. And look at this. Ready to put this away. But no. No, no way. Tom Griff is not going out that easily. Some nice hours to the head. Now bringing down that spine buster. And Tom Gris knows he needs to try and put this away. Oh my god! Oh my god! No way! No way! Tom Gris, he just did his finisher! Out of nowhere, really! I did not see that coming! Two! Oh, but Trash Taker kicks out! It's nowhere near over yet. Oh man! That did. I did not see that coming. I, apologies if my throat sounded a bit weird just then. My god! Oh, nice clothesline right there. And Tom Gris continue to build up a head of steam right here. Oh, like that. Nice work. And now, Ducks Under. Goes for a big clothesline. And kipping up. Nice work there by Tom Gris. The animal in full control. And now we might be about to see the first weapon of the match. Here we go, hardcore rules. And a ke Oh, that's a sledgehammer. I thought it was a kendo stick, but no. Oh, across the spine and there you have it trash taker might be just been shown that tom gris can get just as hardcore big spine buster and now going for the pin here one two no trash taker still not going out like i said he's taking his fair share of weapon shots he's not oh wait a moment wait a moment wait a moment is this it is this the end Boom! That's going to do it. Oh, man. You could see the soul leaving Trash Taker's body. No! It's still not enough. My God. Oh, man. And now, going to go for a choke slam. No! Tom Grissom, another reversal. Tom knows that if Trash Taker hits that choke slam, it could very well be over. He knows that Trash... Oh, wait a minute, look at this. Backstabber! Nice work there by Tom Gris. And now the animal going for a pin. One, two... Oh, but a kick out at two right there. Still not over. Tom Gris, he's thinking, what does he have to do to put Trash Taker away? Oh my god, is it going to be third times the charm? Is it third times the charm? No! Not even going to get a hit here a third time. I'll go for a pin here. One, two, no, die sight there. I didn't think that was going to happen. Oh, but Tom Gris getting right back to his feet once again. DDT! Oh, could this be it now? A pin for one, two, no. No such luck. And now, Tom Gris wrenching the head of Trash Taker. Just working Trash Taker over right now. And now Trash Taker. Ooh, nice shoulder block right there. Brings Tom Gris back to his feet. Oh, that chop to the face. And now again, going for a choke time. But again, a reversal. No way. Oh! Busts him open! Might have been a knockout blow! Two! No! Barely even a two. Might have been 1.9. That is crazy. But look again! Third 
more times a charm, surely, surely this is it. Oh, and there you see the rest of the salt leaving Trashtaker's body. Two, three, and a new hardcore champion is here. Congratulations to the animal Tom Griss on becoming our new hardcore champion. Wonder how the boys at GHK are feeling about this one. Knowing that we have our new champion and it's our VGIW wrestler. Oh man, GHK, the big hardcore promotion. Losing to the you know, losing to VGIW. Mm. <laughs> Sorry, I won't be so smug. Brilliant match. Honestly, Trashtaker did do very well. There's a reason why he was the hardcore champion headed into this. But Tom Griss refused to let Trashtaker hit that finisher. It just you know, didn't work for him, brother. And Tom Griss staying strong, hitting that finisher three times. Trashtaker endured two finishers. But that third hit, that third slam was enough to finally put it away. The fact that Trashtaker was so close to winning if he had hit his finisher proves how close this fight could have been. But a new hardcore champion, Tom Briss, well, he's going to bring the animal to GHK. Next up, it's a global championship match as Moxie looks to dethrone the current champion, Plague Princess. Oh man, the Global Championship. Now for those who are unaware, the Global Championship basically like the Intercontinental Championship for the men's. Basically, if you can hold on to the Global Championship or the Intercontinental Championship with six successful defenses over six months, you can't just hold the title for six months and do nothing with it. That kind of defeats the purpose. You have to defend it six times over six months. You can then relinquish the title for a world title opportunity. It might not, you know, when you get number one contendership matches, you might wonder why people would do that. But sometimes for a wrestler that might not be getting considered for number one contendership opportunity, they may be just a little bit too low on the totem pole right now. You know, so they might not, you know, Plague Princess, for instance, maybe won't get a world title number one contendership match right now. So if she can hold on to the tower for six months, that gives her a major opportunity. She goes from someone who may not be considered world title you know, material right now to becoming a world champion. It just takes some patience and an amazing amount of fortitude to be able to endure. So far, I do not believe any wrestler has successfully achieved this feat yet, but it is completely possible. We have seen wrestlers get incredibly close, such as Untouchable, who were only lost at the very final match. Had to have been majorly crushing for her there. But, regardless, you know, a huge opportunity here. And you've got to imagine Moxie wants to start going on that path herself by getting the title here tonight. Anyway, now we wait. And here comes Plague Princess. Now, one interesting thing about this dynamic, and something that I've mentioned before about Plague Princess, is she is like the... She is like the powerhouse that's a counter to other powerhouses. I don't know how to explain it. You only really get it when you watch her in the ring. When she goes up against other powerhouses, she seems very adept at handling them. Very adept at taking them on in the ring. And given that Moxie is, in fact, a powerhouse, you've got to wonder if Plague Princess might have Moxie's number before the bell even rings. Of course, it's hard to say because Moxie's more than just a powerhouse. She's also a pretty damn good striker as well. But I've got to wonder if that's going to sh shift the tide slightly as the match unfolds. Because, well, I mean, Play Princess is champion for a damn good reason. Now, Moxie has been this close to titles before. Her and Ruby Bourne were once going for the United Team Championships at one point. They were close to being the first United Team Champions, in fact, only losing to Sandra Davies and Minnie Taylor, which was very shocking. Um, I'd expected it to be a win for Moxie and Ruby, honestly. But, you know, that's how it works at BJW. Anything can happen. Now you see Moxie there looking very ready for this one. I am excited to see how this one unfolds. 
Moxie with her look in her, you know, I mean, Plague Princess with a look in her eyes, staring daggers at Moxie. That is a lovely looking belt, massive belt, probably the biggest physical belt. Might be in the physic biggest physical belt, just period, honestly. But it is a lovely championship. And like I said, might be a ticket for these two who may not get many world title number contendership shots in their current position. Like I said, though, this could be their ticket. This could be the gateway for them to becoming world champions. It makes it such a great opportunity here. Especially as time goes on and the women's division continues to evolve, we're going to start to see the, 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 the definitive divisions, the people who are going to get world title shots more often because they're more successful versus the wrestlers that maybe get pushed down cards because they're not that, you know, not as successful. You know, you see it, we're seeing, we see it with the men's division now. You know, there are certain wrestlers who get, you know, who we know are extremely successful, who get the big opportunities. Platinum Pete, Wade Danielson, Ace Barkey, Crusher, you know, you, know you get my point. Meanwhile, there are wrestlers who are lower down on the card. Your Walter Abbotts, your VVCs, you know. The point is, you know, your Golden Phoenixes. The point is, you know, opportunities like this help them out to potentially shoot their, their status up. And I feel like for the women, they're going to find that this is going to become more and more valuable as time goes on, especially if they can get in this early on. They can prove that they deserve to be world champions. Now, look at this though. Moxie right now taking Play Princess into the corner and battering her. Nice work there by Moxie. And now going for the leg. Ooh, yanking on the leg right there and just not doing anything major right now. I, just, I think Moxie just looking to try and remain in control of Plague Princess. Looking to try and show that dominance. You know, trying to show that she can stay in control. Or maybe, believing it to be a little bit easy. But no dice right there. Plague Princess stays in this one. Right across the temple. And now Plague Princess is back on the clothesline. You, know, you, you can see Moxie's tag partners, Willow and the Warrior Ruby Born. Um, on the outside, the thing about Hit Squad that makes them so such a notable faction, in my opinion, is you've got the strength from Moxie, you've got the speed of Ruby Born, and you've got the cunning of Willow. The, you know, Willow, basically the leader of the Hit Squad. It makes them, you know, what, it means that, in my opinion, they're going to prove to be quite a devastating faction in long term. Oh, Moxie now going up to that middle rope. And look at that, showboating right now with that fist drop. Just a bit of showboating right there. And she looks to her, like, she looks like she's barely breaking a sweat right now against playing Princess. But Moxie needs to be careful. She can't get too brash. She can't get too egotistical because Plague Princess could immediately switch the match on a done. That's the thing with wrestling. Our match could look like it's going your way. It could be like old Edwin up on the top right, ready to hit that shooting star press. Suddenly, boom, you're out like a light, and Randy is above you, looking incredibly smug. Now look at what I mean right there. Now, look at this. Play Princess really changing the tide. Whip, power slam. It can really change just like that. Look at that. A strength. Oh, that ref has got to be sweating. That very nearly took him out. And now, wait a minute, Moxie with a vice grip across the head. I think trying to wrench the mask off as well. Oh, man. Nasty work right there. But not enough to phase Plague Princess, who is back on her feet with a big boot right there. And I think Moxie is beginning to falter. Oh, look at this, going for the arm. Oh, nasty work right there. This is why I don't step in the ring. I would hate to take moves like that. Wait a minute. Look at this now. Moxie. Looking to take out Play Princess. Oh, my goodness. Could that have knocked Play Princess out? Oh, if not, then Moxie's going to make sure of it here. Oh, God. Oh, 
Those elbows never get any easier to look at. And meanwhile, Play Princess trying to fight back. Oh my god. Play Princess looking for a finisher here. I think she's realized Moxie is proving to be an absolute terror. She knows she needs to put this away now. Because Moxie is proving to be quite devastating. Hitting the finisher could put this away. Here we go. Oh, with a double handed choke slam. And now, one, two, three. Good work there by Plague Princess. Who knows how the match could have happened if it went on any longer. Plague Princess could have felt that, had that match slipping further and further away from her grasp. Sometimes you need to just go straight for that finisher if you want to hope in hell of holding onto the title. Now Plague Princess with another successful defense on her, you know, her third out. I've got to try and think how many defenses has she has? It's between two and three now. I don't remember exactly, so I will have to double check. But Play Princess is getting very close now to being able to relinquish the Global Championship for a World Championship opportunity. That is a major gamble, but you know for a fact that Play Princess has got to be feeling good, and any wrestler would want to take that up, that gamble. She looks at the title, the title that could get her a shot against current World Champion. Sophia Muller, or maybe the ne current next contender, Ella Savage. Have to wait for the main event to find out. But before that, we've got the men's world title now, as Platinum Pete looks to take out the world champion, Hardcore Hank. Oh, this is exciting. Platinum Pete, one of the greatest submission wrestlers of all time. With the Platinum Standard, which won him World Championship gold before. Platinum Pete is a former World Champion. Meanwhile, Hardcore Hank, between two to three times World Champion, I cannot quite remember. Like I said, we have to get records all together. Fact is, though, Hank has been firmly rooted. Yo, know, Hank has won many titles in his time in VGIW. He's been World Champion, Tag Champion. Fact is, Hank is comfortably sitting on the top of the tone pole, on top of the mountain of VGIW. Meanwhile, Platinum Pete, has, despite his age, has been very much carving out a position for himself up there on the mountain. And honestly, he is a natural in that ring. He's not going to be diving, he's not going to be flying like the likes of Wade Danielson. He is very comfortable in what he can do though. He knows his limitations and he works beautifully in that ring to still be an incredibly capable contender regardless. But I, will, I won't lie, as much as I love Platinum Pete, this is going to be difficult to say the least. Out comes Hardcore Hank. Hardcore Hank, one of the toughest contenders I have ever seen stepping in that ring. He's like a Terminator. He is incredibly powerful, incredibly durable, incredibly devious, incredibly malicious, incredibly just vindictive and cruel in that ring. He is one of the greatest wrestlers to ever step foot in that squared circle. And he damn well knows it. Hank, a multi-time world champion. One of the longest reigning tag champions. He is going to be damn near impossible to defeat. Platinum Pete is going to have to bring his A game if he wants even a slight hope to win this one. But for a bit of cunning and for enough durability, enough strength and heart, it might happen. But man, is it going to be difficult. There's that world title, won by the likes of The Reaper, Wade Danielson, Platinum Pete, Hardcore Hank, Aaron Storm. This is a title that only a few have gotten the opportunity to hold. And in my opinion, every single one of them have been major stars. Major stars have won that. Only the, major, the biggest stars, in my opinion, have held that belt. That is the top prize in VGIW. Man, 
That is a beautiful title. Been around since pretty much the beginning. And Hank is... I, I want to give Platinum Peter a chance here. I really feel like Platinum Peter is one of the greatest wrestlers we have. But Hank has been so dominant in the past. It really takes a lot to take him out. We're going to have to wait and see, of course. If Platinum Pete can remain a step ahead of Hank, then we might see a major shift here. Here we go. And Hank races right out of the gate with a Lufez press. And this is exactly what I thought was going to happen. Brain versus Brawn. And unfortunately, right now, it looks like Brawn is with... No! And never mind. Nice work right there. Lovely work there. Irish whip by Platinum Pete. He needs to keep up like this. Oh, but Hank is right back up. And Pete there. Look at this. Oh, good. Trying to keep a step ahead. But that's the problem with Hank, though. Oh, God. Right over the Costa knee right there. And Pete, God, clinging on to both of his knees. That clearly sent a shockwave throughout the body. And Pete right now could be in major trouble because now Hank is in firm control. Pete needs to figure out a game plan. He needs to get back in control like he was before. Nice drawbreaker right there. And a, oh, no, no, no. Didn't even come close. Oh, this is concerning. Now, taking him into the corner. But Hank would be getting back out. And now... What is he planning here? Oh, look at this. Showing off. Oh, right to the midsection with our knee right there. And now Hank dragging Pete. Center of the ring. What? Only a... Not even a one count. Pete hanging in there. Good sign right there. Nice elbow to the face. And Hank is left staggered. Oh, but that clothesline doesn't even do anything. Nice Northern Light suplex right there from Hardcore Hank. Now Hank with the elbows to the head. Oh, man. And Pete is left out of it. And now going for the head right here. Just working it over. And you know why he's doing that. If Hank hits the knee, then Pete is out, going to be out like a light. It's not even going to be close. Which is why Pete needs to keep aggressive like this. He cannot afford to let Hank hit a move like that. Nice leg drop there from Platinum Pete, who is doing surprisingly well, all things considered. Oh, but Hank is not making this easy. Hank is like a warlord. Just absolutely just... Oh, this is brutal. Oh, look at this. Oh, this could be a problem here. Big power bomb right there. And now Platinum Pete... Oh, look at this. Hank now with a gigantic swing. Sw sending Pete all over the place. Oh, this isn't looking good. Hank is showing off his brutal strength. Now going for the pin. One, two, three. No! He didn't even need the knee. He did. Oh, my God. I can't believe this! Platinum Pete has fallen! I said it was going to be difficult, but I think that power bomb must have been the end. You saw the way the head bounced. Oh my god! If Pete can't be Hank, who can? Oh my god, that's terrifying. What does this mean? for the World League Tournament. If Hank is this powerful, can anyone dethrone him now? I've always said that Hank is superhuman, but this is, this could be a whole new level. I don't know what, oh my God, that's actually really scary. I don't know what the, I can't believe it. Hank, barely breaking a sweat in that match. That's what the World League contenders have to deal with. That is our world champion. Sp speaking of the world champions, we're now going to go to the women's division for the women's world championship match as Ellis Savage looks to take on three-time world champion Sophia Muller.
Yes, yes, okay, that reminds me. Hank is a two-time world champion. Reaper is a two-time world champion. Sophia Muller is a three-time world champion. Yeah, two times for Hank and Reaper, three times for Sophia. Yeah, because I remember Sophia is the only, currently the only three-time world champion, which is a monumental achievement. My God. You know, we have, currently have two world champions who are supremely dominant right now. Two people who are very, very comfortable on top. Now for Sophia Muller, she lost it the first time to us, you know, in, uh, it was a brilliant championship match, but Sophia Muller very quickly took it back, um, and then lost it to Donna Schmidt in a surprising uh, encounter, but Donna once, a, you know, Sophia once again quickly took it back. Could we be about to see the end of the third reign? Because Ellis Savage, very capable in the ring. Definitely a great all-round wrestler. I don't know. Ellis is still so new to VGIW. This is going to be difficult. But she has risen the ranks so quickly that it very well could be possible. This might be her biggest and only opportunity to do this. You never know. When it comes to VGIW, like I said, there's so many people looking to get that top opportunity you need to take every opportunity you can get, and this might be Ellis's one and only major opportunity like this. But my god, what an opponent to face. Three-time world champion, like I said before. There has been, in terms of the history of the women's roster, there, there has been very few times where we've seen a champion that wasn't Sophia. Sophia, our very first women's world champion, and still, holding on to that belt, the other reigns were very, quite short in comparison. Sophia, one of the most devastating individuals I've ever seen in that ring. Much like a Hank, can absolutely brutalize her opponents. In the case of Sophia Muller, she doesn't have a killing strike like the knee. She throws her opponents around. She beats them black and blue. And if she wants, she can win with the Alabama Slam. But more likely, she'll wear you out. She'll leave you barely conscious. And then she'll lock in the Kimura. At that point, any chance you had of even daring to fight back. Well, you're not going to fight back if the Kimura's locked in anyway. But there's always that hope that you can wriggle before it gets locked in. That's not happening if you've been being black and blue. And if Sophia wants, she can break your damn arm. So once it's locked in, you don't have any choice. You tap out if you want to still have a career by the end of the night. If you want to still be wrestling next week, you will tap. Helen Monroe, her arm wasn't broken, but her arm was injured because of the Kimura. Because Helen, Sophia went just a little bit too hard. Because Sophia did that, because she held it for that little bit longer, she injured Helen Monroe and Helen Monroe was out for a few weeks I think I don't remember the exact time frame but the point is Sophia can injure people she does not care she's a damn sociopath maybe not even a sociopath just by no psychopath I don't know point is Sophia does not care about the well-being of her fellow opponents there's no respect there's no sportsmanship all that matters to Sophia is that she's on top. So Ellis Savage is going to have to fight not just like this is a championship match. Not like this is just the biggest match of her career. This could be the biggest match of her life purely because she is going to have to fight to survive. Not just win, to survive. You don't want a reign where you win the title, but because of your injuries, you have to immediately relinquish it. That's assuming she wins it all. The match begins, and right at the gate, big clothesline! And you saw Ellis try to stop the momentum, but my god, no way you could stop the, the speeding train coming down the tracks. And this is not looking good for Ellis Savage at all. You Now, I don't know if you remember, but I remember in the Champions Challenge match once, Billy actually got a pin on Sophia Muller, and Billy, well, you know, she got, you know, Sophia gave her a world title shot, but and you, you, you might have thought, oh, Billy's getting a major chance here. It was to humiliate Billy. Oh my god! Oh, this is not looking good. 
Ellis Savage, normally so incredibly dominant in matches. Not, not maybe not dominant, but so incredibly capable. Of just being toyed with. For a firm and demonstration of what Sophia Muller has said before, she will not, she does not want her world title matches to go before Hanks. She's even threatened in a promo saying that she would break Hank's arm if Hank tried to like, uh, you know, if Hank tried to fight back against it, Sophia had no qualms with beating the shit out of Hank. Now that hasn't happened, but like, I don't know if, if Sophia could beat Hank, but damn, I know for a fact that she would try. Now we're starting to see a nice bit of fight back from Ella Savage with a beautifully delivered knee to the midsection, but Sophia brushing it off. And now go for a rolling knee bar here. And look at that, the, the force on the leg right there could cause major damage. And that's why Ellis immediately getting, breaking free there. And you can see still holding on to the knee, definitely left some damage. Clearly not long term damage. Ellis is back on it, but you can tell that she's likely got some pain she'll be feeling in the morning. And now, oh, nice stuff to dodge there. Good work there by Ellis Savage. And again with another knee to the midsection. And now we're starting to see Ellis Savage getting to showcase her abilities here. Oh, nice knees to the back right there. Oh, right in the face of Sophia Muller. And Ellis Savage beginning to build that momentum. Great work there. And now bringing Sophia to her feet. But Sophia with the jawbreaker is right back in this. But look at that. Not allowing Sophia to bounce back. Nice. DDT right there from Ellis Savage. And now you see Ellis looking to go for a pin here. And not even a one count. That is terrifying. That's genuinely terrifying. Oh, but Ellis now racing to the top rope. Oh, what is she planning here? Look at this. Big elbow drop. And now going for the pin here. One. Two, oh, two counts. So close. We nearly saw a new world champion. And now, go for another knee in the midsection. Just a working Sophia over here. Irish whip against, into the corner there. And again, continuing the work Sophia Muller over. If she can stay like this, stay one step ahead, this is going to be, this could be huge. Oh God, she was going for a major move there, but Sophia breaking free. Oh no, 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 not the Alabama slab. Not the Alabama slab. Oh God. Oh, that could be it. I was about to tell how, you know, Ellis was gonna break free of like my concerns. She was gonna, oh my God, staying in this, thank goodness. You know, I, I was gonna say without Ellis, defying expectations. But Sophia Muller changes the tides right back in an instant. Just like that. Oh, man. And the crowd is not happy. You can tell they were hoping for Ellis Savage to maintain control, to get that shock victory. They want to see someone new on top. But no, Sophia Muller is not about to let that happen. A real reign of terror over the women's division. The women's division continuing to grow, continuing to evolve, but Sophia Muller still on top. Wait a moment. Oh my God, no way, no way, no way, no way. Oh my God. Ellis Savage looking for a finish here. Oh my God, here we go, here we go. Go Prakta! No way, there's no way. There's, oh my God. Going for the pin. Could this be the end? Run! Two! Oh. Can't believe this. Kick out there. Well, I, I guess I can believe it, but for a moment, for a moment, I believed. And Ellis Savage now racing to the top rope. She's going to try and ride this high. She didn't win the match. But that's not going to stop her. Go! Oh, trying to have a drop kick, but Sophia dodges just in time. Oh. I think Sophia might have been playing possum, which is... <sighs> Look at that, working the arm over. You know damn well why she's doing this. You know damn well why she's doing this. Oh, 
man. I mean, I can't fault Sophia, but man, I can't help but root for Ellis Savage, who is still new to BJW, yet has risen the ranks this quickly, showing and a crazy amount of talent. Meanwhile, Sophia Muller, who has been heartless, who is a who can be cruel to her opponents. You know, of course, I'm going to back Ellis in this. Oh, look at this now. Snap there. Whoa! That was snap over a little extra sizzle on it. Whoa! And now working the arm herself there of Sophia Muller. I think maybe trying to get into the head of Sophia, perhaps. But there you see Sophia rolling. Oh, that elbow there. And now a big close line from Sophia Muller. I, my goodness. Oh, arm drag right there from Ellis Savage. And now a knee to the face, dazing Sophia here as Ellis now looking to go and fly high. Here we go. Oh, she's calling for Sophia. Sophia now about to fall into the trap. No, oh my God, no. Sophia got out of the way. She got too close. And made, and made it to that, made Ellis, she, she knew Ellis was about to jump, it was too late, oh the Kimura, no, 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 oh it's over, it's over, reach for the ropes Ellis, they're so close, they're just out of reach, no, it's over, so close, yet yeah, just out of reach, couldn't make it to the ropes, and still, your world champion, Sophia Muller, my god, like I was saying, LA Savage was going to fly just as she was about making that leap, that commitment to leap. El Sophia got in close so that Ellis would overshoot and then locked in the Kimura. The fact that the match was able to end like that, that is terrifying and that is why Sophia Miller is a three-time world champion. That is why every time she has ever lost the title, she almost immediately gets it back. Because the fact is, she is a terrifying individual. She is one of the most dominant wrestlers ever. Dusk and Donna are brilliant wrestlers. But they're not Sophia Muller. They're not Sophia Muller. They might be two of the best women in the business. But clearly we need something else. If we're going to see Sophia Muller be dethroned, she... I don't know what's going to happen heading into World League 3 with Hank and Sophia at top, on the top. But if you enjoyed this video, please remember to leave a like on this video. Subscribe if you haven't already and hit that notification bell to be notified of future videos on the channel. Comment, let us know what you thought, and share this video with your friends to be notified of more videos. And we'll see you next time.